When it's hot outside, there's nothing more satisfying than a big bowl of pibing naengmyeon, or Korean spicy cold noodles. Buckwheat noodles are topped with a spicy sauce, beef, egg, and crisp cold vegetables. Koreans believe that eating spicy foods is the best way to beat the heat. So come on, let's go inside the kitchen, grab some buckwheat noodles, and I'll show you how to make this. It might seem a little weird eating spicy foods when it's hot outside, but in a way it kind of makes sense because then it's like you sweat and then you cool down. I don't know. I don't know, really know the reason. But anyways, what you're going to need for this spicy peeping naengmyeon is buckwheat noodles, brisket, Asian pear, cucumber, garlic, Korean radish, onion, reserved beef broth, sugar, white vinegar, salt, sesame oil, Korean red pepper paste, Korean red pepper flakes, eggs, and roasted sesame seeds. Let me start out by making a disclaimer. If you want to make the sauce, it's actually better to make it the day before. You don't have to, you can totally make it the day of, but the flavors just meld better together. There's a second reason why. I'm using some beef brisket. You're gonna need about a pound for four servings, but since it's just the two of us, I have half a pound here. And this is cold because it was in the fridge. All you do is put it into a bowl of cold water and soak it for about 20 minutes. This will draw out some of that blood and not make your stock so cloudy. Then you're gonna place it into a pot of boiling water and make sure you have enough to cover it. Once it comes up to a rolling boil, you'll see some gray scum just come up to the surface. You wanna skim that scum and remove it. After that, let it cook on low for about an hour and a half to two hours or just however long it takes to get tender. After that, fish out your beef, save it in a Tupperware in the fridge, and then don't discard that beef broth. You wanna place that into a separate container and chill that as well. Once it's chilled, you'll see that there's fat that rises to the top and you can just skim that out easily. All you're gonna really need is about half a cup of it for your sauce. And for the rest of it, you can use it for other things like making tteokguk or my Korean rice cake soup. We'll leave a link for you down below. Since my beef is already on my board, I'm gonna go ahead and slice that up. And normally I cut beef against the grain so that it's tender, but this should be tender enough. And for this particular dish, you want it to hold its shape. So we're gonna go with the grain. So wherever the lines are going, just go along with that. And you're gonna cut it thinly. This beef has no seasoning in it. I didn't salt the beef broth. Before I go along chopping everything else, I'm gonna move over to the blender because you wanna get that sauce made as quick as possible so it has more time to chill in the fridge. In a blender, you're gonna grab half of an onion, a small onion, you don't want it too oniony, and you're just gonna give it a coarse chop. And then I have a teaspoon of minced garlic, two tablespoons of gochujang or Korean red pepper paste, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out my Korean ingredients guide video. We'll link it down for you below. Three tablespoons of gochugaru or Korean red chili flakes or powder. This is just a coarser grind, so it's called flakes. It doesn't have any seasoning like the gochujang does. Two tablespoons of sugar. You have to balance out all that heat with some sweetness. One teaspoon of kosher salt. That's your seasoning and then one tablespoon of white distilled vinegar. And the last ingredient is half a cup of the reserved beef broth. This happens to be chilled because I made it the night before, but if you're making this all in the same day, just make sure it cools down a little bit. And again, I strained all the fat out of it as well. Blitz it up. I like to get a rubber spatula and give it a scrape along all the sides and the bottom. Don't breathe it in. It's almost there, but I want it to be as smooth as possible. Okay, looks good to me. Make sure you scrape all of that out of the lid. I like every last drop to be in here. Look at that gorgeous color. That smooth consistency. I'm just gonna give this a wrap, throw it into the fridge, and let the flavors mingle for a little bit. I'm not gonna let it mingle nearly as long as maybe you should, but it'll still taste good. 
The next thing we're gonna work on is our pickled radish. And this is a quick pickle. So you're gonna start off with two tablespoons of white distilled vinegar, three tablespoons of sugar. And this might seem like a lot of sugar, especially to the ratio of the vinegar. You're not gonna consume all the sugar, it's gonna get rinsed away too. And then I have two teaspoons of kosher salt. Seems kind of thick, and it is, but it'll do its job. Now, this is a Korean radish, or called mu. Yeah, like as in the cow. It comes in a longer log. Again, you can check out our Korean ingredients guide video if you want to see what it looks like. And I just cut off a little piece of it, and I'm going for eight ounces. They sell this at the Korean market, or you could use daikon radish, but if you can't find it, then you can skip this altogether. In my opinion, it just adds this really wonderful, crunchy, sweet and sour taste to the noodles. What I'm doing is going for some very, very thin slices in half moon. So I just cut it lengthwise and now I'm cutting it thinly. You're going for about an eighth of an inch or less. So you don't have to go paper thin, but you want it to be thin enough that it turns flexible and it soaks up the vinegar solution. Give your solution another stir because the salt and sugar may have settled to the bottom. It doesn't look like a lot of vinegar solution for this amount, but you have to give it a toss and let it sit for 20 minutes and it will release some of its moisture. Once in a while, give it a toss. And I'm gonna move on to chopping everything else. I have half of an English cucumber and I'm just slicing it thinly on a bias. Stack them up and then just cut them into little matchsticks. And then I have a little bit of an Asian pear just taking out the core and the seeds and I peeled it and it's so juicy and watery and it's so crisp. So um, you can't really replace it, but if you don't want to use it or you can't find it, you can use a Bosque pear. I've seen some restaurants use only Asian pear or only the pickled radish, but I like to use both. I think it's different textures, different flavors, and they both bring good qualities to the dish. And the last little bit is a boiled egg. You just need half of an egg for each person. So I just boiled one. And you're gonna place that on the top. And lastly, I have some naengmyeon noodles. And this is just buckwheat noodles that they sell in a package, something like this. Sometimes it's sold as pibing naengmyeon and sometimes it's mur naengmyeon, but you'll just look for the word naengmyeon. You don't wanna cook these until you're absolutely ready to serve. So I'm just waiting for my pickled radish and for my sauce to get a little deeper in flavor. And then I'm just gonna boil these noodles and plate everything up. In a pot of boiling water, grab one pound of noodles. In my case, I'm using eight ounces because there's just two of us. Bring it to a boil, and after about two to three minutes, when it's soft but still elastic and not too soft, you wanna drain it and rinse it in cold water like you're doing the laundry by hand. And then you're ready to plate. Okay, well enjoy looking at it pretty like this for the last time because it's gonna be a hot mess after you mix it up. But I mean, it's worth the presentation, right? It looks beautiful. <laughs> I hope it tastes beautiful. Mm -hmm, I'm sure it will. So you can see I have my handy kitchen scissors and in the restaurant, what they do is they'll actually just chop through <laughs> your noodles a couple of times and it helps it to mix easily. Because of photography and everything we do for our blog, this might have been sitting here for a little bit. It's gonna be harder to mix. My mouth is getting watery just thinking about it. I know, but look at these coagulated noodles. <laughs> this is why it's important to not cook noodles until you're absolutely ready to serve. So hungry. Mm. <laughs> Clumpy, but good. <laughs> I feel like we're in the middle of summer right now. Mm -hmm. So refreshing. Mm. Combination of the meat and the pickled radish. Mm. It's like perfect with this uh, with this noodle. Mm -hmm. The noodle is chewy. The sauce is spicy. 
a little bit sweet and the depth of flavor. Man, it would be even better, honestly, if I had made this sauce the night before, but I wanted to show you everything on camera. So it's still good though, right? It's delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. That pickle radish is everything. For substitutions, you could completely keep it vegetarian if you wanted to, and instead of beef broth, use water. And if you wanted to add a little lighter touch, but you still wanted a protein in it, you can always use like grilled shrimp, chicken, whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. And don't forget that last touch of sesame oil and sesame seeds on the top because it adds that depth of flavor, makes it kind of like nutty and um, has a good mouth feel to it. It also helps to mix the noodles easier when you slick it with some sesame oil. So don't forget that. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this and spending time with us today. I'm sorry if I have like red sauce all over my face. I have no idea. Very good. Very <laughs> okay. good. Well, if you enjoyed it, remember to let us know by pushing like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching. We're just going to enjoy this. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. My wires are everywhere. A teaspoon of minced garlic. My stomach's growling. <laughs>but I feel like, you know, because everything else is spicy, this, but I figured because the spice is, <laughs> I'm like, I figured the spice is spicy. <laughs> the combination of the meat and the, mm. the, the lettuce, or the, <laughs> <laughs>